congratulations. What's it like to beat a guy with a name like Jim Miller? It's, a, it's the best fight of my career so far, right? It's the best win of my career. Um, that's the way I see it. Uh, sorry. Be best win of my career. Uh, Jim Miller is a veteran. He's, he's been fighting in the UFC since I've been fighting as an amateur. So to fight him and dominate him the way I did is, is it's just amazing. Nothing but amazingness. Is he as tough as they say? He's a very tough dude. I hit him with some hard shots. I hit him with some really tough elbows. Um, he hit me pretty good a couple times. I know I rocked him uh, with that head kick a little bit. Um, but yes, very tough, very durable guy. Um, I don't want to say I was expecting to finish him, but at, at some point I was like, damn, how, like how much can this guy take, right? Like, he's just a tough, he's a tough, tough dude. You say that you expect to finish, you, you do want to say that, but when you go into a fight with someone like him, do you know deep down this is going to turn out to be a battle of attrition? Like this guy's going to stick around and he might eat some of my best shots and I have to not be discouraged by that? Yes. I, <laughs> in the back, I was telling myself, this is a tough dude. He's not going to go away. This is, this is going to be the, the hardest fight of, of my career. I'm going, to be, I'm going to have to fight with everything I have the full 15 minutes if it goes that far. Uh, towards the end of the third, he, he grabbed you on a guillotine. It looked, it looked in tight. How close was it? Yeah. Oh, shit, man. At first, it wasn't too bad because I had his head up against the cage, and, I, and he didn't really have the squeeze. But once he adjusted, he was, he was squeezing me, and it was, if I didn't get my head out another few seconds, and I, I probably would have had a tap, if I'm honest. He probably would have caught me. Were you conscious of how close you were to the end of the fight? Yes. Minute? Yes, I was. Um, I heard my coaches tell me there was a minute left when we were standing throwing knees. Um, I went for the takedown. He grabbed the guillotine. I was like, shit. Keep his head against the cage. Keep one hand on the hip so he can't, so he can't squeeze. I was doing good. He adjusted. I was like, oh shit, it's getting bad. Um, he adjusted again, got even tighter. I was like, shit, shit. I was like, ditch effort. Let me just push his face away so he can't squeeze on me and then pop my head out from sweat and it worked. So luckily, luckily I got out. Otherwise, I, I would have been another submission under his belt. All right, so last thing from me, I just wanted to ask, can you talk me through the from hell tattoos you have on your biceps? Oh, uh, <laughs> Well, obviously, you guys know it's my nickname, right? My, name, my nickname is From Help a Shell. My mom gave me my nickname. Um, I didn't tell my mom while I was fighting until my first professional fight. I went up to her in the kitchen one day, and I was like, Mom, I have a job. Um, she's like, oh, what are you doing? I was like, I'm fighting now. She's like, yeah, I know, stupid. You get arrested for all the time. And I'm like, no, like, I'm actually fighting, like, for money now, and I'm fighting in, like, a month. You want to, like, come watch? And she's like, oh, what's your name going to be? The Pichelle from Hell? And I started laughing, and I was like, shit, man, like that. Like, I actually love that, right? And I told my coach, Brian, and, and we kind of played with it with the guys in the gym, and we came up from Help a Shell, right? And then uh, I wanted to get it tatted on me, right? Because it, it just fits me so bad. Like, anyone knows me, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a happy-go-lucky guy, right? Like, I'm always messing around, I'm always laughing, I'm always joking. Um, but when, when it's time to come, when I'm serious, I'm not that guy to fuck with. So I was like, I want to get from hell on me. And I was thinking I wanted to get it on my knuckles, right? But then I'm like, what better way to show it than get on my biceps so when I'm up here flexing, motherfuckers know. So that's why I got the tattoo where it is. <laughs> Congrats. <laughs> Thank you. I know a lot of people have been making a, a big to-do about Jim Miller and how many fights he's been doing this and how long he's been doing it. But you look at yourself. You, you, you're no spring chicken yourself either. I mean, you've, you've been doing this for quite some time. I mean, what's been the key to your success in staying so um, active and just fighting at probably maybe what you consider the best that you've ever fought? Honestly, uh, I contributed to a lot of it to good genes. I won the lottery with my parents. Um, <laughs> um, but uh, no, uh, all joking aside, it's, I, I've really learned to take care of myself. I'm one of those guys who's like too stupid and to quit sometimes. And a lot of my injuries have come because of that, where um, I'm in the gym and I'm like working, work, working, and I'll hurt myself or I'll have, I'll have like something that's nagging me. And then I'm like, you know what? Screw it, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna train. Fuck it, we'll, do, we'll deal with it later. And then it turns into something bigger. So I kinda, I kinda strayed away from that in my old age. Uh, I learned to take better care of my body I now uh, will take some training sessions off, which I get chewed out by my coaches sometimes for it, but I'll take sessions off and I'll either rest or I'll, I'll be at home and I'm stretching, I'll roll myself out, I'll go get a massage, I'll go sit in a hot tub, you know what I mean? Um, I have a stretch guy who I see occasionally to stretch me, um, but I, I do things like that and I, I take care of my body a lot better than I used to. 
Um, I'm getting up there. I'm 37 years old, right? I'm going to be 38 this year. But in the gym, you wouldn't know the difference between me or the 20-year-olds in the gym. So I'm just super fortunate to, to honestly just love what I do. And, and when I'm fighting, I love it so much. I don't, I don't stop to think how tired I am, right? I'm just, I just go. So I know I kind of contribute to that. It's kind of like I'm playing, right? And it's like when, you, when a kid's playing, the kids never want to stop playing. And that, that's just me when I'm fighting or in the gym. I just, I just don't want to stop playing. I know a lot of guys, it seems that maybe, and you can attest to this, in the early on in the career, training, it was spar, 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 hard, hard, hard. Now, has that changed? Do you spar less in training now, knowing that you want your body to hold up so you can maybe get some more years out of this? Yes and no. Uh, like, this camp, I've sparred twice. Neither one was hard sparring. Um, typically, I don't do a lot of hard sparring because I hit like a truck. So when guys hit me, harder and I hit them harder, they like, they kind of don't want to play with me in that manner anymore. But um, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I, I used to, I used to be a real hard, just, just knuckleheaded fighter where, you know what I mean? I, I've been in phone book fights with some, with some tough, tough dudes. Um, but uh, I used to do that, but not so much anymore. But from time to time I do just to just kind of feed my body and make sure, make sure I'm still sharp, make sure I still got it because, uh, I'll tell you one thing, there, there, ain't, there ain't no kind of fear when you're fearing for your safety, right? <laughs> there, ain't, there ain't no time that you're going to really concentrate and do your best like you will when you're, when you're scared. So sometimes I feed myself that, but for the most part, no, I like, to, I like to take it fairly easy and work more on technique and, and stuff like that. I know you said this was probably the biggest fight of your career. How much did you miss the uh, fans when you're walking in there knowing that this was a big fight for you? Honestly, I didn't even I didn't even really notice. <laughs> not that I don't like, not that I don't love having like the angry roar in the crowd or the war cries. I absolutely love it, and it does feed into my energy, you know, sometimes. But uh, I'm, I grew up fighting. I grew up fighting in the streets where it's quiet. You know what I mean? I was on the Ultimate Fighter. There's no one in there, right? Besides your, your guys coaching. Um, I actually told my coaches to be quiet in the corner too because I wanted to be absolutely as quiet as possible, right? So I could kind of hear myself think and, and go through the go through the motions of the fight. But it doesn't, it, doesn't really, it doesn't really affect me, you know? Like, I, I've been fighting my whole life ever since, honestly, ever since I can remember, I've, I've been fighting, and, and uh, it's just, it's not really anything new to me. Would you say you like it better than when the crowds are out? Would you like it to stay like this for a little longer? No, because the world's a weird place right now, and, and if this is the new norm, I'm not happy with it. Um, I definitely want things to go back to normal, but uh, I'm embracing it for now. I'll embrace it for now. Last one for me. What, what is it going to take? I mean, Jim Miller's a huge name to, to crack into that top 15. What do you think it's going to need for you? Is it another big name or another couple wins? What do you think it's going to take for you to crack that top 15? Honestly, uh, just I would say just keep winning, you know what I mean? Knock some dudes out, get some submissions, do some, some dominant performances like I did. Hopefully I get performance of the night. Wink, wink. <laughs> Uncle Dana. Dana. Um, but uh, yeah, just just dominant performances like I have. Um, that that's not really for me to say. If I were to tell you the the, the way I look at it is, uh, I'm I'm just a pit bull that that needs to be let off the leash every once in a while. And uh, if I'm given opportunity, I'm gonna jump at it. They told me if they asked me if I wanted to fight Jim Miller two weeks ago, and uh, I told my manager, say yes, tell me who it is later. So, it, I mean, I, whatever they whatever they want me to do, I'm, I'm here to do it. Vink over here. Um, we didn't it's get Vince. to. Uh, sorry, Vince. Sorry about it. Um, <laughs> your coach Dominic Cruz was uh, commentating. Did he, you get to hear him? No, actually, I didn't. Even, I didn't hear them at all. They, I don't know if they were whispering or what, but I was kind of expecting to hear them maybe talking some shit or some good stuff about me during the fight. But I honestly didn't hear it. I don't know if I was tuning it out or if I was too much into the fight. But I didn't hear him at all. No. I hope it was good stuff. We didn't get to talk to you at media day. Can you let us know what happened? Yeah, I was at the PI enjoying myself. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> I uh, yeah, I was at the PI. I totally slipped my mind. Um, if I'm honest, in, during fight week, I could not that it's oh, fuck. It's gonna feel real bad, but I can I can give a shit about anything but my fight during fight week, right? So, I'm sorry I wasn't there for media for you guys, but uh, I just I, I was doing me. I was I was practicing. Uh, I was working out. I was practicing. Um, I was doing some recovery. So I was just trying to. I was trying to make sure I was 100, totally 100%, 110% for this fight. So I'm sorry for that, but you got me now, right? You got me now, you, right? True. You're listed as being uh, born in Lancaster, California. Was yeah. that where you lived uh, originally? 
I was actually, uh, I was born in Lancaster, California. Um, I moved at an early age to Canoga Park, um, Los Angeles County, uh, Canoga Park, California. And I lived there until, um, geez, when was that earthquake? In 94 or 96, the, the Northridge quake? When Northridge quake hit, um, then I moved to Simi Valley. And I've been basically in Simi Valley ever since. I moved out for a couple of years here and there, but it's like a magnet. I keep getting sucked back into that place. So that's where I'm at now, and, and that's where I've been. There's only two fighters uh, in the UFC who have ever been from Lancaster, yourself and Danielle Taylor. What's it like to put a small town like that on the map? Uh, I don't know, honestly. I, I haven't been there in years. <laughs> the last time, I mean, I still go there from time to time. That's where I go, like, when I go dirt bike riding and stuff, I go out there, I'll go out in the, I'll go out in the desert somewhere and I'll go, you know, I'll go bring, me and buddies will bring our guns and we'll go shooting and, and bring our dirt bikes and stuff, you know, I like to have a good time. So I do visit from time to time, but you know what I mean? Uh, I'm not the kind of guy who ever forgets my roots, right? So I'm super proud I'm from there. A lot of people talk shit about Lancaster because it's just like a, it's just a shit desert, honestly, but uh, it's where I'm from and I'm proud of it. So anyone wants to talk shit, come, come tell me to my face. Congratulations, <laughs> Vince 661. Um, more of a comment. I just want to say the mustache looks great on you, sir. And um, same to you. Same yeah. to you. That's all, that's all I got. Congratulations. Looking pretty mustache. glorious over there yourself. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Congratulations, sir. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs>